Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here in Louisville, Kentucky, St. Stephen Baptist Church, with another powerful point to ponder as we spend meaningful moments with the master in the word of God. Thank you for joining me again today. Yesterday, we began the theme, um, the same bee that stings is the bee that produces honey. That which stings us also can be that which brings something quite sweet into our life. And we are looking at Acts chapter 16, and this entire week will focus on Acts 16, so you can read it in advance and see where we're going. But um, we talked about yesterday how Paul was stuck. He, he, he was praying that he would have the opportunity to go to a place called Mysia, but the Holy Spirit said, no, Paul, put on the brakes. And Paul saying, oh, God, what's this about? So he hopes to go to Bithynia, which is his second choice. And God again says, no, Paul. And it ends up in a place called Troyes. And it looks like God has blocked Paul's dream. Uh, but he had not blocked Paul's dream. He blessed Paul's dream because in Troyes, Paul will meet a man named Luke who would write the gospel of Luke. And had Paul been given what Paul wanted, then he would have missed out on a tremendous blessing. And so would we, because we would not have Luke. We, we, wouldn't have, we would not have the book of Acts. So he, he, he's in Troyes, and while he's in Troyes, he has a dream. He has a vision, and in his dream, there's a man in Macedonia, Philippi of Macedonia, and he, and Paul, and he says to Paul in the dream, come over and help us, us. And it's a man, don't forget that. A man in Macedonia says, come over and help us. And Paul was convinced that God wanted him to go to Philippi of Macedonia. And so guess what he does? He responds and, and he goes to Philippi of Macedonia. And when he gets to Philippi of Macedonia, he was expecting, because it was a man who told him, quote, and help us, he was expecting something really significant to take place. But instead, when he gets over to Philippi of Macedonia, look at what verse 13 says again. So he arrives in Macedonia and Philippi of Macedonia. And in verse 13, again, it says on the Sabbath, we went a little way outside the city riverbank where we thought people would be meeting for prayer. Notice he was expecting a big crowd to meet him. And we sat down to speak with some women. Now, just look at this verse, this park right here. We were expecting a big crowd. Instead, there were just some women who were gathered there, just some women. So this is a stinger because he's expecting something big and colossal, and all there is is a group, a small group of women, as we shall see, that is praying. How many times have we expected something big and colossal? We thought God was leading us, and then when we get there, it's not very big at all. It's just a group of women. And I say just a group of women because in that society, the culture of the Bible is very sexist. In those days, you had what was called a synagogue. And Paul was hoping that, that he would go to a synagogue and he would be received at a synagogue. Because in, in the vision, he had a dream of a man, not women, but a man saying, come over and help us. And because they're so sexist, as we still are today in our culture, only men, it took 10 men to make up a synagogue. He doesn't even have a 10 man synagogue. He gets over there and look at what he sees. Some women gathering. In fact, look at verse 14. Verse 14 says, one of them was Lydia of, from Thyatira. So a group of women, one of them was Lydia of Thyatira. Here's the sting in this. The sting in this is that Paul is expecting something big, something colossal, something earth shaking. But when he gets to uh, Troas, no, excuse me, when he gets to Philippi of Macedonia, instead, there's a group of women. One of them is named Lydia. It's quite small. And usually when things don't blow up for us as soon as we want them to blow up and the way we want them to blow up, we think, boy, we just got stung. My money's not blowing up. My career's not blowing up. Certain relationships that I hope will blow up, they're not blowing up. So this is what you call 
anticlimactic because Paul is expecting something huge when he gets over to Philippi of Macedonia. And instead, he only encounters a group of women by the, by the riverside praying. But Paul's mistake is the mistake we make. First of all, he's making the mistake of minimizing people. Don't minimize people. When we have sexist views or racist views, and we say, well, my God, that's just a group of women. Or those are a group of despised minority people. Well, we, we undermine our own blessings. So the problem is not that God is not blessing him. The problem is Paul has a perspective. He doesn't see that this is really honey. It looks like a stinger because it seems so insignificant and so small. And many times we misjudge people. We misjudge events and say, this isn't important. This is insignificant. This is small. There's a wonderful passage in the book of Zechariah that I'd like to read to you. Zechariah chapter 4 and verse 10. It, it says this, so do not despise these small things. Now this is a story about when they're rebuilding the temple and those who remember what the old temple looked like in Jerusalem are complaining because they're saying the small temple is not as grand as the big temple. And Zechariah says, I know it's not big and grand like the old temple, but quit despising small things. And Paul is despising here a small beginning when he came to Philippi of Macedonia because it seems so insignificant. And so many times what we think is insignificant and really small, and we say, this is a stinger, I'm disappointed is really sunny because it's really big. Yes, there were some women there, but in that group of women that Paul didn't know who he was talking to, he didn't know who he was looking at. One of the women was Lydia. Go back, if you will, and look at that verse again. It says in uh, verse one of them, 14, one of them was Lydia. Now, Paul didn't know who Lydia was, <laughs> but I can assure you, everyone else knew who, who Lydia was, especially if you're living in Philippi, you know who Lydia is. Let me, let me put it this way. Imagine it, it reading this. Um, it says, and Paul went to Philippi of Macedonia. There were a group of women there, and one of them was Mrs. Rock Rockefeller. Paul doesn't know who he's talking to, but that's Miss Rockefeller. Or suppose it says Paul comes to Philippi of Macedonia and it is Mrs. Bezos, whose husband or former husband started Amazon.com. Now, Paul doesn't know who he's looking at. Uh, the people in Philippi know who he's looking at. But Paul doesn't know who he's looking at. He's misjudging who he's looking at. And many times we do the same thing. Because it says one of them was Lydia from Thyatira. Look at who she is. She's a merchant of expensive purple clothing who worship God. Please notice that Lydia is the, although she's a woman, she's probably the wealthiest woman in Philippi. And it's better to have a three, three people and one of them is Lydia. One of them is a quadrillionaire than to have all the men in the world. But Paul didn't know what he was looking at. He thought it was a sting, but it was not a sting. It was really honey. And she was selling purple. Purple is what, in other words, she owned Neiman Marcus. This girl doesn't own some dollar general. She owns Neiman Marcus because notice it says she's a merchant of expensive purple clothes. Only the rich people wear clothes. Remember I told you Luke wrote Acts? But if you go to Luke chapter 16 and verse 15 about the rich man, so look look at God. Paul said, uh, uh, there's nothing here but a group of women, but it was Lydia. And how many times when we minimize some blessing that's right there in our face, but we just don't know what it is. Well, what was good about Paul is that even though there were a group of women he didn't treat them in a disrespectful way. Be careful how you treat people. You never know who you're talking to because we're told in verse 13, it says this. It says on the Sabbath day, 
They went outside the city river bank where they thought people, they thought people would be meeting for prayer, which means that's saying they thought they were gonna encounter some men. And we sat down to speak with some women. In other words, although he didn't get the men, he still was kind to the women. And you gotta be careful how you treat people because you never know who you're talking to. We sat down to speak to the women. In other words, he opened up his kindness to the women. He treated them with dignity and respect. And you never know who you're talking to because verse 14 says what? One of them was Lydia from Thyatira, a merchant of expensive purple clothing who worshiped God. And she listened to us. So Paul opened up his kindness to her. He was kind to her. It says, as she listened to us, the Lord opened her heart. In other words, God hooked up Paul with the wealthiest person in all of Philippi of Macedonia. And she not only opened her heart, opened her heart, she accepted what Paul was saying, which means she accepted Paul. God had hooked her up with this woman who's going to hook Paul up. And verse 15 says this, verse 15 says, she and her husband were baptized and she asked us to be her guest. If you agree that I am a true believer in the Lord, she said, come and stay at my home. And she urged us until we agreed. This girl's got her own business. She's got money, she's got her home, which means that Paul's headquarters all in Philippi would be at the home of this woman named Lydia. And at first it looked like a stinger because he was expecting to see a lot of men in a big place. And sometimes the big crowd is not always the best. Sometimes just a few committed people is all you need. And he ends up with a Lydia doesn't talk down to her. Maybe God was testing Paul to see if Paul would treat all people with dignity. He took dignity. He treated Lydia with dignity. Lydia's heart was opened up to Paul because Paul taught her the gospel. And then after God opened her heart, she opened her home and her resources to him, finance Paul. And by the way, let me tell you something else about this woman, Lydia. Remember, God opened up her heart. When Paul moved over to Philippi, I want you to get this point. This is a very important point. When Paul moved over to Philippi of Macedonia, when he left Troas and went to Philippi, do you know what Paul had just done? He went from what's called Oriental culture to Occidental culture. He went from Afro-Asiatic culture to Europe. Philippi is in Europe. This was the very first time the gospel has crossed over into Europe, which is to say, listen carefully, up to this point, I know that in all the biblical stories and biblical images that you have, that they are white people. That is inaccurate. They were people of color. Jesus was a man of color. These, were, these are what you call Afro-Asiatic people. When Paul went from Troy as to Philippi of Macedonia, that was the very first time that the gospel went over to Europe. In other words, guess who Lydia is? Lydia is the first white girl in history to become a Christian. The first white man to become a Christian was a man named Cornelius in Acts chapter 10, an Italian, a Roman soldier. But the first white girl Christian was Lydia, the first one. And she would open up her heart and her, God opened up her heart and she opened up her home. Here's the point, here's the takeaway, here's the powerful point to ponder. Be careful when you are evaluating the significance of something based on the size of it and also based on the people that constitute the group. You never know when you're talking to some Lydia of Thyatira who's got bank. You never know who God's going to use to hook you up. You never know who you are talking to. So treat 
everyone with respect and dignity because the same bee that stings is also the bee that produces honey. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word and bless us to treat all people with respect and not to uh, mis-evaluate what we're looking at. We are looking for a big crowd, but maybe only a few people is really all we need because in that little group of, few, of a few people, there is a Lydia. And we never know when you're leading us to some Lydia, so help us to be alert and treat everyone with dignity. In Jesus' name, amen. So everyone does need a church home and you need a church home. If you don't have a church home, uh, look, we'd love to invite you to become a part, a virtual member of St. Stephen Church. Contact us here at St. Stephen Church, newstart at ssclive.org. We will get back with you. Well, thank you for joining me again today. Don't forget that the same bee that produces the stinger is also the bee that produces something sweet. All right. Look, I'll see you tomorrow, but until we meet again tomorrow, during COVID-19, don't forget to stay safe, stay sane, and wear your mask. See you tomorrow.